I've got a couple of letters to read to you. Microphone. I'm on. Am I not on? Evidently not. He hard at you. Huh? Evidently not. No, there's a mute button on. Huh? There's a mute button on. Wait a minute. <coughs> the light came on. Not on now? No, there must be a mute button turned on. Huh? Uh, no, no. There must be a mute button on it. Uh, huh? There must be a mute button on it. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's on mute. Yeah, it was. It was. Now, now. Now. Am I on now? On. Okay. Well, we always read to you if we have some letters or emails. We read most of them this morning. Sometimes I get stacks of them. Sometimes I get a few. I've got a couple emails here and then uh, a couple of letters. These are people that write to us from around the world, around the country. They're people, most of them love the truth. I got an email from James Hassler. He's up in East China, Michigan. And he gave, gave me this prayer that we've all heard all our life. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and to change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. He says, a prayer for my childhood, which, which sounds ungodly now that I know that we can't accept or deny anything which is the will of God. That's true. What does Jim think of George Washington Carver as a believer? I don't have any idea. I'll look him up in the internet when I get home. I don't know. I had heard that he was a believer. I don't know. Uh, then he, number three, the word proud is used so often to show one's pleasure in something. It is one of the ways I can discount those people at that time as being believers. Well, don't mean because somebody uses the word proud. It means they're uneducated, especially knowing how God sees the word proud. Uh, James 4 and 6, God resists the proud. Well, resist is the word anti tassomai It means to wage war with, and that word proud is the word huperephanos. It comes from hooper above, and phanos meaning to shine. Those people that shine above others with their talent, their abilities, uh, with their looks, with their property, with their possessions. God's at war with those people. They either don't know the Word of God or they're created a new Americanized definition of the Word. Proud was an evil word when I was a little kid in the 40s. Now it's considered a good word. And it's an evil word. Because you've got three words for proud in the New Testament. Huperephanos, and you have uh, the word, uh, gosh, I just drew a blank. Uh, one of the words, tufao, means to be conceited or solely consumed by smoke with no fire. And then you have the word alazania, God, uh, uh, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That word pride is alazania means self-esteem. It's God looks dimly on it. Wonder if it's okay to be proud to be the elect of God. No, because <laughs> you'd be saying, I did something to be that, and you did nothing to be the elect. It still seems to promote self. That's exactly right. It's the same as those people that use the words, oh my God, or even just saying the word God, or Jesus, to instill excitement and in more importance to their verbal statement. The ones who are believers should hear themselves. Agape James Hassler, East China, Michigan. Thank you, James. We love you, brother. He, he writes to us all the time. He's a part of us. Uh, then I got a, a letter from Mitchell Hassel. And Mitchell writes and says... Uh, Dear Jim Brown, thank you for the DVDs. You say a lot of things I say my mom said and that you sound like my old people. I miss them, and I know I will miss you if God will permit you to live longer 
that is in my prayers. But sometimes living longer can be tor a tr torturous, so I pray for your good health, Jim. Please send me more or of the old DVDs on the moon people going to the moon. Well, I'm not really interested in that. I don't know what happened with that, and I don't think that's what we need to be concentrating on. Uh, I want the paperwork you pass out. I have known churches, but I have the things you send me, and I am proved or proud of you. <laughs> well, we just talked about that. More than you know, I love the inside of the word as you give it and my something love for you will never change if you send me the thing i ask for i will in turn send money and when i have more and so forth uh, thank you jim well thank you mitchell and then i got a letter here from uh Gladys Huggins, and this is Susan's uh, mother. She sits over here on Sunday morning, and she's in Niles, Ohio. And uh, got a pretty little card here. And she says, hello all, thank you all for what you do and for the tapes. I have learned a lot from you, teaching than I knew before. It is hard for me to keep a straight line. I hope you can read this. It's hard for me, too, to write in a straight line. I hope you can read this. I can not see as good as I could a year ago. I try to do the best I can. I thank God I can do as good do as good as I can. Take care, Gladys Huggins. We love you, Gladys, and love your daughter coming here. She's a dear, sweet lady. That's Susan. All right. And then uh, I got a letter here from uh, Philip Quatrasi. Philip's faithful listener, watches all of our DVDs. He's up in Staten Island, New York. Uh, and this is Phil. I think he's an older fellow up in my age range. Dear Jim and family, it amazes me how people who can be believers think Trump is the answer to the world's problems. Yeah, me too. And nobody's answer to the world problems. Uh, I just don't get it. I try to explain that yes, he is put there by God, but not for the good of the world. For the world does not love God. You're right. Not as we know. Loving God is keeping his words, his commandments, and the world definitely does not fear our Lord. There will be no mercy for the world. God only has mercy on those who love him and fear him. That's right. It makes me it makes no difference how many scriptures you show them. They just don't want to believe. Just have faith in what they want to happen. Love, Brother Philip. Well, I believe that. Of course, I don't believe Hillary Clinton is going to be, do any better. N nobody's going to do any good. God's going to do good by putting those evil men in there and have them deal with our lives, and it'll make us mature, and then he'll send them to hell when they die. That's, boy, that's the way to put it in. <laughs> I'm not sorry to say that. That's what the Bible says. The Not many mighty, not many wise in this world, not many noble are called. God's going to take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the things that are not to bring to naught the things that are. He's, what he's saying, he's going to bring, take nobodies to bring down all the somebodies. And then I got a letter here from uh, George, uh, Gregory Cox. Dear Pastor Jim, 
Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for teaching the uncompromised truth of God's Word the way you do. The doctrine of predestination you teach is help, helping me gain a panoramic view of the entire Bible. Like one gigantic algebra equation, it all fits together. You're exactly right. In perfect balance, when I attended churches in the past, I would learn tidbits of the Bible truth without any understanding of how they all fit together to accomplish God's sovereign plan. For his elect family, no matter what you teach, you consistently demonstrate how predestination is essential to understanding Bible truth. Thank you, Pastor Jim. Predestination is proof that our Heavenly Father is in sovereign control over everything, just like he says he is in his word. Please use the enclosed offering as you see fit. Gopi Greg Cox. Thank you, Greg. Greg writes us all the time. He's in Washington, D.C. I'll read one more here, and then I'll get on with the class. All right. Uh, what have I got here? Uh Here's one from Dallas Bonifante. His father used to write to us years ago, but his father passed away, and now Dallas is writing to us. And uh, he appears to really love the Word. And uh, he just wrote a little note here. Thanks for the DVDs we are learning with your teaching, our new... Uh, address is and gives us the new address. Thank you, Dallas. Just stay in touch and we'll keep sending these. Uh, I'll see if I had somebody that... Here's one I haven't remember seeing before. Kyle Saxton. He's in Anchorage, Alaska and we're on TV up there. He's seeing us on TV. Uh, he says, uh, Thank you for your ministry. Please continue to send DVDs. I have learned so much and really like to be able to repay. Jim gets going fast, and I can miss things on the first viewing. Before DVDs in Anchorage, Grace and Truth is aired only one hour. And f on Friday at 8 to 9 p.m. Well, that's a good time, though. Uh, now I can see DVD every day. The, the correspondence helps with a sense of belonging to a church family. Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. We love you, brother. Well, that'll be enough reading. And remember our announcements. We are on TV Monday through Sunday at 8.30 p.m. on Comcast. Uh, channel 49, and then we're on same channel 49, Comcast, Sunday morning at 8.30. Uh, we're on Saturday morning at 9, and we're on channel 3, Tuesday evening at 5, and Thursday night at 7 on channel 3 in Hendersonville. Uh, just keep, keep watching. Uh, we support our needy people. We got a lot of needy. I got sometimes more on me than I feel like I can handle. I'm not talking about financial wise. I can't help everybody as much as I want to, but sometimes we got so many people in so much trouble and I'm on the phone counseling people long distance uh, sometimes several times a week and it takes a lot of calls and lots of talking and and I want to help these people so they can know what they need to be doing. And uh, let me see, I'll put these over here. And if you want to help these needy people, you can either send gift cards or you can send an offering and make it in the form of a check and put it, put it, uh, make it to Grace and Truth Ministries and put needy on the bottom of the check. Or like I said, you can send a gift card. And we also uh, help Scott and Delilah Warrior down in, in Ecuador. They're, they're our missionaries. 
they're going to move their mission work to Hendersonville because they're not getting as far as they want to and their kids are not getting an education. They're not learning anything in the schools. The schools are very low grade and they've been on the mission field for eight years. We don't know eventually what they'll do, but we're going to try to continue their their Spanish uh, their Spanish uh, mission work on the internet, and if we can get them on some uh, uh, some TV access, and that way they could uh, continue to do their Spanish up here, and they'll probably meet here on a on a uh, Thursday night, but they won't be here until uh, February, and we need to get them least a few pieces of furniture maybe if we get about four bunk beds and because they got four kids i think we've got another uh, set of some furniture but uh, whatever you can come up with help us and uh, we'll uh, continue to support them and they're going to need a car when they get here and uh, we may have one or two located since they both drive. So uh, do what you can for them. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ken, would you pray for us? Thank you, God, once again for allowing us to be here tonight to where we can sing praises to your name and listen to your word, some word, the word that we can live by. Without you... All things are with it, with you, God. All things are possible. Some things are possible that we sometimes we don't understand or we don't like, but you know it's for our good. We thank you for that, God. We thank you for who you are and what you represent. Now guide us through your night. Give us your grace and forgive us the way we have failed thee. And may your message be as such. It'll be something that we can live by. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 Mm. You know, I'll be praying for me. God will give me strength. I get pretty weak sometimes. So I get real tired of the way the world treats the Word of God. And I push all the time and I don't ever quit going and calling and trying to help people with their lives people are I feel something I don't want to sound ominous or spooky uh, but I feel something in the air like there's something going on in the world that we're going to have an explosion of some kind. It may not be a literal explosion, but it will be uh, something spiritually. It just seems like every, the world is so cold towards the truth. They're just cold. And I notice it because the calls from the TV slow down. People, some of them quit supporting the ministry. Um not all of them, but it just, it's like there's a disinterest like I've never seen in the Word of God. I've never seen this much disinterest. I put out a ton of information. It's like people don't even care. I go through verses and go through chapters in the Bible to explain what they mean. And I've spent a lot of time on this in my life. And it's like, well, so what? That's the way the world is looking at it. I know there's less interest today than there was back even in the 50s when I was a teenager. It just seemed to be less interest. There's just not hardly any. And I keep wondering if God's going to do something with the world. It's, uh, I'll say something about that tonight. I believe we're headed down. You can't spend like we're spending in America 
and not pay for it. It's not possible. I'm not an economic genius, but I'm fairly a little bit intelligent, and I can see that without thinking too hard on it. I'll tell you what will frighten you is go online, just Google national debt and go to every link you go to. And before you get up from the chair, you're going to be, oh, man, we're going down. The, the authorities say it's no hope. And I'm not talking about the politicians. I'm talking about these ec economists that kind of uh, give all the reports from these universities. They don't have a lot of good things to say. Now, the politicians do, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> Politicians Politician will tell you how we're going, they're going to solve all these problems, and the Bible says they're not. Boy, it's just... Huh? They don't, do they? No. Not any. Well, God's going to get credit for the judgment he's going to bring on it. Whether they give him credit or not, he'll take it himself. I don't think I need that. That. 